Democratic rising star, Texas gubernatorial candidate Wendy Davis, is firing back against allegations that she misrepresented her compelling personal history. It was a relatable story of the struggles of a young mother who overcame adversity to graduate from Harvard Law a centerpiece of her campaign against Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott. Well, over the weekend, the Dallas Morning News noted that while the basic story is true, some of the details are not. For example, Davis had been 21, not 19, not a teen mother when she divorced and was living in a trailer park alone with her daughter. Yesterday, Davis tweeted, Two days ago, Abbott and his campaign sunk to a new low, making personal attacks on my family, my education, and my character. Attacks won't work. Mine is the story of millions of Texas women who know the strength it takes when you're young, alone, and a mother. An Abbott spokesman then released a statement that read in part, Senator Wendy Davis systematically, intentionally, and repeatedly deceived Texans for years about her background, yet she expects voters to indulge her fanciful narrative. Let me bring in Jason Stanford, a Democratic consultant and partner with the Truman National Security Project. Robert Tradem is an MSNBC contributor and former Bush Cheney senior advisor. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning Chris. Chris. Uh, an interview with the Dallas Morning News. Uh, here's what Wendy Davis explained. Quote, my language should be tighter. I'm learning about using broader, looser language. I need to be more focused on the detail. Robert, uh, is this much ado about nothing or could this be a real problem for Wendy Davis? Well, I think it is a much ado about nothing, and it can be a problem for Senator Davis. Here's why. It's not a question about being tight or not, just being truthful. You know, I don't understand why you have to embellish on something like this that is so easy. Look, the fact of the matter is, is that it seems like she was a single mother, regardless of when she was a single mother or not. And the fact of the matter is, is that she graduated from Harvard Law School. That's, to, that's, to, that's admirable. That's something to be very proud of. And so to embellish as to whether or not you lived in a trailer park or whenever you divorced, whatever the case may be, I, I, don't, I just simply don't understand. I mean, this is the small well, stuff. Could be that it she misremembered it, and then when she went back and really looked at the facts sometimes i can't remember well, how know, old I, I am right now well, you know, be, to be honest with you, Chris, I've worked on many, many campaigns, and, and that's the reason why you have research opposition. That's why you do opposition research on yourself. And that's the reason why, you know, you read everything before it goes out, because these are the little things that can get you in big, into big trouble. And the reason why it can get you into big trouble is because the constituents out there will take a look at this and say, well, wait a minute. If you can't, if you really can't tell the truth about the small stuff, how am I going to believe you on the big stuff? Well, the part of the, the Republican argument is that she did not just talk about this, but she also touted this person story in, in ad campaigns. Here's one with her daughter. She was raised by a single mother with a sixth grade education. She married young and by 19 was divorced and raising me as a single mother. You know how they say everything's bigger in Texas. Well, that certainly wasn't the case for the trailer we lived in. Jason, part of her campaign strategy is to woo women voters with this story of sure. struggle, as we said, something relatable. She grabbed national attention, of course, with her 11-hour filibuster opposing abortion restrictions back in June. She puts herself forward as a fighter for women. Does this hurt her credibility? No, not at all. I think these were mistakes of memory, not of intent. In fact, there are more inaccuracies in the article than there are in her own stated narrative. The reason conservatives are making a lot of this, and I congratulate my counterpart here for t saying that this is much ado about nothing, but down here in Texas, this is you know, the biggest thing anyone's talking about because Wendy Davis does have a compelling narrative and they need to knock it down. And by the way, she's raising more money than she is. She is a legitimate threat to Greg Abbott and that is why they are attacking her. But Wendy Davis doesn't need her ex-husband, who was quoted in the article, by the way, or Greg Abbott or any Republican to mansplain her life story to her. The basic facts are this, that she rose from virtually nothing. She was the first in her family to graduate from high school, for crying out loud. She was a teenage mother in a trailer park. She rose out of that, got into Harvard Law School, and now the state senate. This is a great Texas story. The article changes none of that. Well, one of the other complaints on the Republican side is that on her website, she does not mention that her ex-husband helped to put her through school. Um, oh, and boo. Who? I mean, yeah, I, I think we can all assume that when she was married and going to law school that her husband helped. In fact, it's a community property state, and she was working at the time, so to say that her husband put her through law school when they both took out loans for this 
is really demeaning to women. I mean, I think there are a lot of women out there who, you know, have put their husbands through medical school and whatnot, but everyone works together to do this. And that he complained in the article about paying her law school payments when she had been a working lawyer for 10 years after law school and contributing to that, I think is really awful. I, God forbid any of us have our life story subject to our exes having veto power. I think that is beyond the pale. You know, uh, there's obviously polls on this race, and it's a very tightly watched race. She did get so much publicity when she did that filibuster, Robert. She also raised $12 million for her gubernatorial campaign, although overall she still trails Greg Abbott, who's raised about $27 million. Is that how we're really going to track um, how this is affecting her when we look at uh, some future fundraising numbers, Robert? Well, I don't think fundraising numbers alone can determine whether or not uh, she's going to win or not. I think we have to take a look at the personal opinion polls. I think we have to take a look at the unfavor unfavorability rating there. And look, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, there are a lot of Texans out there that are scratching their heads. I don't live in the state, but I have a lot of friends in Texas that have said, you know what, she has a very compelling story. There's something there. However, Texas still is an overwhelmingly conservative state. And so the question becomes is whether or not Mr. Abbott can, can pull through. And according to the polling numbers, and also according to his latest fundraising numbers, it looks like he very well will pull this through. Texas is still a Republican state. Let's just be honest about it. Robert Trainum, Jason Stanford, not the last time we'll be talking about Wendy Davis, I'm sure. Thank you both.